Ruiz. Welcome back to the next part of this Truth and Rhythm episode. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you've already done so, please share it with friends. Also become a member by joining Truth and Rhythm on Patreon or consider donating at funkinstuff.net. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Enjoy. It's funny because from the outside looking in as a fan, you know, you think, um, what's going on with the group? You know, why are they changing? Why are they doing this material instead of... And yeah. you don't always realize how much external forces are weighing in on that and causing that, you know, and it's not actually the band. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, like, I think that's what I, what, what, you, look, you know, uh, 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 let, let, let me put this in, I don't want to put this in the wrong, in the wrong, in the wrong way. Right. Uh, I, I, I alluded uh, to the, to how a reef would, would, uh, uh, produce a, a band and that he wouldn't he would do all this other stuff but you wouldn't lose the band yeah? david foster came along uh, to produce the band who is a fantastic producer let's make this clear he is an amazing producer but i don't think david is as good at producing a band quote unquote band as he is at, as producing an artist yeah so the stuff, the songs that we did with with David, it's good, they're good recordings, and 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 it's done really well. When we went to play them, we had to have get some background vocalists in. We had to get another keyboard player in, and I'm sitting there on stage playing these songs, and I'm like, "Where'd Average White Band go?" You understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it was it was, it was another band. Yeah, it wasn't. It needed all this augmenting. It needed another keyboard player and another two two extra vocalists, and uh, and uh, and I mean, there was a point we picked up Sammy. We took Fat Sammy Figueroa out on the road with us, you know, because he was not 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 because we needed him to be there to play. He's, he's a percussionist, but because he was a fun guy and we loved having him around and 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 uh, and sammy would come out and work with average white band and we'd we'd have we'd have a we'd have a ball with him but he wasn't he he, he could be there or he didn't have to be there we'd be we had him there because we liked him he was a fun guy yeah so but it, with this other stuff we had to we had to augment the band because we just couldn't make it it didn't sound like the band we couldn't make it sound we had to make it sound like like this record, and then, then we, I sort of found out the the, band, the record didn't sound like the band anymore. Yeah, that's why I always love so much those self contained bands, you know, yeah. that really could keep that vision and that sound and that identity. Um, well, you, you know, I mean, I, I got to say uh, that that sort of uh, that that was a discovery that I had when when I worked with Bloodstone uh, because Bloodstone weren't just four singers like the temptations or 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 the or, or the uh, uh four tops or or or, or uh, uh um well, money 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 um oj's oj yeah yeah oh as good as all those guys are bloodstone played that piano bass player and a, a keyboard a bass player and a guitarist and we used to go and play like that never had a big band nothing we go and play like that and 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 uh, uh, when i first started working with them it was like well, that, that's not going to be like the four that but they weren't the four tops of the temptations they were a self-contained band and they're great you yeah? know it was a band that's the difference between producing singers and producing a band yeah and reef had a touch for that he could do that he could do both basically 
Well, and it was like to your great benefit, as it turned out, that you had already set the the groundwork with all of your session work and all that, so you could just roll right into that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you, you work so much with uh, Shaka Khan, who I mentioned before. Uh, what can you share with viewers about you know what it is like working with her? Because she, just so you know, she's my favorite female singer of all time. Yeah, hey, listen, hey, I'm with you. She's she's incredible. She got an incredible instrument right there. Yeah, and uh, and uh, amazing lady. I, I love Shaka. I I saw I saw a few years back. Uh, I went to a Grammy thing, and she was there, and, and I hadn't seen her in a long time. She's just an amazing artist, and and those all those records that we did with her would do, every one of them were just uh, it was just great. And Arif, Arif again, Arif Martin, you know, uh, uh, would uh, uh, the bebop medley. He would he would write a piece of music and then he'd come in and we'd play that and then he, the next day he'd write the next bit that went in with it yeah you know? uh, and uh, and it, it was a progression for him like, what should we, what, what should I do next and it was always like a little bit quirky something a little bit strange and uh, 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 and the other thing too was that when this was the thing when 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 we would go into those stu into the studio and uh, uh, Shaka was always late. Right. We'd, we'd have like, a, I don't know, like a 10, 11 o'clock start. Shaka would show up, you know, one, two o'clock in the afternoon. So we sit down, all these, all these uh, amazing, amazing players you know, that were, that were Anthony Jackson and, and uh, Will Lee would play bass sometimes. Anthony Jackson played bass sometimes. Um, um, uh, uh, George Benson was there on some of the, some of the, some of these recordings. And uh, uh, Richard T, uh, just like uh, Brecker Brothers, all these people, just amazing players. Uh, and 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 uh, we take he take the rhythm section and he would rehearse the rhythm section for a song. And we go over this song and go over parts and he'd find all these parts and we'd sit there and we play these songs and the parts would be there and it would be fantastic. Shaka would roll up, walk into the, walk into the into the into the uh, control room. Get behind that microphone. She, we counted off. She's, uh, she'd open that mouth of hers and start singing, and everything would change. And the band would change, immediately adjust to how she was singing, you know, and what she was singing. And Arif never said, "Hey, that's not what we what we rehearsed." <laughs> he was always like, nah, "That sounds pretty good. <laughs> that sounds pretty good." You know? And that was a. Uh, uh, it was kind of our way of learning the song. His way of getting us familiar with the song. Uh, uh, I mean, it, I, I'm sure that if you'd just taken those tracks and put a vocal on it, it would have been great. But when the influence that her voice had on the track and how that track sounded and felt when she was there and opened her mouth, that's why you got that kind of performance. That's why you love Shaka Khan so much. She's so, so unique. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing her in 1978 at the Roxy in Hollywood and just how she blew the roof off that place. I mean, what just yeah. an incredible, incredible instrument of power. Absolutely. Real power. Yeah. I've seen her wound people. <laughs> I've seen her, I've seen her, I've seen her, I've seen her sing at people when she's got pissed off at them. <laughs> just a certain thing. Wow. <laughs> she's amazing. She's amazing. And you've also been part of the touring band when she's performed. But now I think you're in that. I did, uh, I did, a, I did a little bit. Of, I did a little bit. Of, I, she, she actually made me band leader. I wasn't musical director, but I was band leader. So uh, uh, that was that was my job to do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, Reef came. Uh, actually, Reef came down and, and ran all the rehearsals and and did the musical direction for that. Uh, so it was pretty cool. A lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. I'd love to play with her again. I'd love to play with her one more time. Oh, it's so great. She's still going strong. So God bless her. Um, yeah. Steve, who who would be uh, one or two of your uh, favorite pocket drummers that you kind of look up to that you just think they kill it? Well, it's pretty obvious that Bernard Purdy was a, was, was a massive influence on me. It was the first time that I'd heard anybody play drums with that, that kind of syncopation, you know? I'd never heard. I mean, basically, it was all the Beatles from that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I hear. 
And I'm, whoa, what's that? I never heard that kind of syncopation there, bass drum, what the bass drum. So, and then that was just, just, just all that stuff was like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so Bernard Purdy and then uh, Clyde Stubblefield and, and uh, Jebel Starks with uh, James Brown. Yeah. Uh, 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 and um, uh, I would say uh, um, uh, oh, um, Benny Benjamin with uh, with the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, all the uh, Motown stuff. Uh, um, who am I missing? Uh, oh, uh, uh, James Gadson. Mm-hmm. The stuff that he did, all the stuff he did with Marvin Gaye. It was incredible, and uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I can't, uh, I, I can't forget uh, um, Al Jackson, Al Jackson Jr. Is a, from what I hear, was one of the best pocket drummers ever around, and amongst amongst my contemporaries, uh, uh, Jeff Beccaro was a, a good friend and, and, and just an amazing player. Just an amazing player, and uh, and uh, yeah, that would be about it. What about those uh, contemporary bands to AWB back in the seventies when you played all of those bills with all the other bands, whether you know Earth Wind and Fire, Ohio players, uh, uh, Rufus, or whoever it was? Uh, was there one or two of them that you just thought just brought it and just killed it on stage? Man, you know, I got to tell you, I, I listened to that 70s R&B. <laughs> it's killer. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I got to work with Rick James uh, uh, once, and I love Rick James's. Uh, 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 it's always, like, it's kind of like Tom Petty. Boom, back, boom, back, boom, 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 boom. It's, uh, yeah, it's just great, great. Great pocket. I mean, there's, some, there's some really great drummers. I, I'm friends with a lot of these great these great drummers, uh, uh, Vinny Cayudo and uh, and uh, and James. Uh, 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 oh god! Uh, oh god! My 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 head with names. Uh, who am I forgetting? Jim 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 Keltner. Uh Jim Keltner. Uh, um, uh, just uh, great great players. Just a, a pleasure, a pleasure to listen to, a pleasure to watch. Musical. You know? well, was it was yeah. there a band that maybe AWB when you were with AWB you guys saw and you're like, whoa, we got to up our game? Uh, no, I don't think so. But I, I think that there was there was there was a band there was a band that we all really we all really liked. Uh, 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 the Brecker Brothers had a band called Wings, and. Uh, um, uh, uh, it was uh, 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 Billy Cobham, Will Lee, Don Gronick, Barry Rogers, uh, uh, Mike and Randy Brecker, and David Sanborn, and uh, and uh, uh, they had they had a couple of albums that uh, I think w- we liked we liked that a lot. We thought they were really really good. Yeah, that was uh, late seventies. But they never had like a big massive. Hit. I mean, th- I think the closest thing that they came to a hit was that they they sort of did a copy of Average White Band some a song called "Sneaking Up Behind You." That was a that was a, but it was a good song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were uh, on stage and part of the group when uh, Prince did the Hall- Rock and Hall of Fame performance, right? Yeah. 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 What can you tell us about? that memory well it it was it was a little bit of a it was a strange it was a, you know we we we'd rehearsed most of us had rehearsed out here in 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 los angeles and and learned uh the song no there was much to learn really i mean it was just sort of like go over it scotty thurston uh was was going to play bass on it it was a little bit different and um and uh, so off we go uh, to New York, and we get there to New York, and um, and go get to the rehearsal. And uh, uh, Jeff Young was there playing playing keyboards, and Steve Winwood, 
was there and uh uh we we were uh, we'd run down the song once and uh, unbeknownst to me there was some back issues going on in the running in the background uh prince had, had, had let it be known that he wanted he wanted he wanted to come play with us you know and at first it was a little because olivia had said well you know I, all everybody on the stage now there has worked with george and knows george and george didn't know prince he had never met him so there was a uh, a bit of a you know what 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 should we what should we do yeah you know, so, so uh, i think they they talked to 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 tom about it and he's like yeah okay well if he wants to play then come play you know and so we're sitting there on stage and i'm talking to Win winwood is right here next to me and i'm talking to winwood and and jeff young and winwood says to me he says hey look there's prince right and uh, I look across the stage and Prince is coming and setting up over the other side of the stage. He's there with his roadie and he got the amp and the plug and he's stuffing and messing around with his guitar. I said, what's he doing here? He said, he's going to play with us. I think he's going to play with us. I said, oh, I'm going to go over and say hello. Because it was a little bit, it was a little bit odd, you know, it was sort of like our guys over there and Prince was over there on his own. Nobody was sort of mingling. So I go wandering over there, right? When we was like, you're not going to. I said, yeah, I'm going to, because he had this reputation of like, you know, don't look at him, don't talk to him, or don't, you know. I don't, I don't know anything about that. I'm going to go over and say hello. So I walk, stroll over there, and I and I and I and I, uh, and I, and I say, hey, Prince, how you doing? My name's Steve Ferroni. It's nice to meet you. And he says, oh, he says, I know who you are. And I said, I feel for you, right? <laughs> I feel for you. Great song. Enjoy playing that. That was good. You know. So anyway, I'm looking forward to playing with you today. He said, okay, great. I went back over, sat down, and I, and I, and 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 Winwood, Winwood says to me, he says, What was he like? What was he like? What did you I said, he's nice. Go over and say hello to you. You should go over and say hello to him. He's cool. Everything's good. All of a sudden, I hear somebody playing schoolboy crush. Okay? And I think it's like somebody. Like Letterman Band or something, somebody's like playing it just to like, you know, tease me or something. And I look around and I look over the stage and Prince is looking right at me and he's playing Schoolboy Crush. Do, 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 do. And I'm like, I'll be damned. He does know who I am. <laughs> he does know who I am. So there you go. You got a bit of Prince and a bit of average white band all in the same interview. How's that? <laughs> That solo that he played at that, that it was was just for you know I mean he just sort of like you know what happened we ran down the song and he didn't take that solo at the, at the, in the thing and and, and Tom uh, turned around to him and said listen why don't you just take that second solo and just have fun with it and you know I, I'll figure out when you're done and just uh, you know Tom would give me the nod and I'd cue the ending you know and uh, and uh, he said okay. No problem. We get out there and we do start playing the song, and he stepped up and started playing that solo, you know. And then on top of playing that solo, he put on a whole show, not for the audience, but for us, you know. At one point, he's sitting there and he walked. He he he, he did something that he didn't do in in the, in this in the rehearsal. He walked over to the middle of the stage and he's facing the stage, facing the band, and he's playing. He's playing. And all of a sudden, poof. He falls off the stage and everybody, oh, <laughs> Prince just fell off the stage and he had this huge guy in the audience who called him and pushed him back up and pushed him, <laughs> scared the hell out of all of us. You know? And then at the end of that, uh, he just played this blistering solo and, uh, and uh, you know, it's like, uh, I just sort of like, whatever's coming in, I just sort of play along and just, you know, hold that band together and, and, and and uh, and and then at the end at the end the big ending did the ending and then he threw the guitar up in the air and it never came down uh, and i was sitting there for a minute i'm like that's wasn't it didn't he have a guitar just now where did that guitar go you know, he had a guy up in the thing he caught it God, his life must have depended on catching that thing can you imagine if he'd have missed it <laughs> that was one of his main guitars i think yeah 
Well, so I'm you a, guys a, were you guys were about as, uh, as, as, as the audience was. Yeah, it just it, it was a, he put on a whole show for us, and, uh, but you know, uh, uh, there's there's that there's the video, and if you close your eyes and listen to what he plays, it's just an uh, astonishing solo. It's just a heartfelt, soulful. One. It's got every. It's got every. It's like. It was like watching David Gilmore play comfortably numb on top of the on top of the wall. The first time I saw that, it was like the, the, the perfect the perfect setting for for this guitar. So, I mean, you got a forty foot wall, and the guitarist is on the top in the middle of the forty foot wall playing loud, and there's nobody else to be seen. I mean, that was the perfect setting for a massive rock guitar solo. Couldn't see anything. Nothing you couldn't you couldn't wish for anything better. Well, when when Prince stepped up for that solo, I don't think you could have wished for anything better. It was just an amazing guitar solo. Did did you realize before that that he had that kind of skill, that level of skills? Uh no, I don't think I did. As far as being I mean, I knew he played guitar. I I, I don't think that I'd heard I mean Purple Rain, maybe. Yeah, I mean he's impressive. He's an impressive musician, that's for sure. But I didn't know that he had that kind of depth for a guitar solo, especially playing with a bunch of guys he didn't know. Yeah. One of my favorite parts about that whole thing is just seeing the expressions on some of the guys who are playing, looking yeah. and smiling, yeah. looking, you know, enjoying as much as the audience was. It was something else. Absolutely, absolutely. He just he he, he wanted that moment and he got it. <laughs> He took it exactly, exactly as he wanted to. It was wonderful. Wow. Um, yeah. Do you have one, one or two other um, projects that you've been part of in your whole career that just you're most proud of, or just you know something just so special? I, 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 I uh, you know. Sometimes when I sit around and and, and 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 talk with guys like you that are doing interviews, or so even if I just got friends over the house, or or we're out with friends that are new friends or something, or meeting new people, I meet a lot of people. And of course, you know, the, uh, inevitably the, the the topic goes to music, and and they start saying stuff like, "Oh, you know, there was this band. I used to listen to this band, Screedy Politi." And I said, "Oh, you lived in that absolute, yeah, no, that was me playing drums on there. That was you, yeah, it was me, yeah." <laughs> and I say, "Phil, I feel for you, Shaka Khan. It's a great the track. That was that was me playing on there. There did some of there was a drum machine on there." And I'd say, "Yes, you're talking to it." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Stay with me, Jeffrey Osborne. Pat Matheny. Yeah. And 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 it is, sometimes it just feels sometimes it feels like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but it's just, I mean they're talking about it and I did it. It's like what I just just tell it you like that? I did that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know I don't know if if those songs you know, if, if those songs were just great records, I mean, like Ordinary World was a Duran Duran was a great record. I, I when they gave it to me, I said, "You don't need me on this. This is a hit record." They gave me the demo. And said, you don't need me to play on this. This is this is a hit record right here. They said, "No, no, no. We want you to go and play on it." So I went and played on it, and I don't know. Sometimes I don't know whether they were hit records before I started playing them, or whether I gave a little bit and made a difference that made it a hit record made that difference that made it a hit record doesn't really matter which way either way i'd just been really blessed with an amazing career and and continue to be blessed with an amazing career and, and uh you know still get to play with guys a 72 year old guy that gets to play with guys that are, that are still relevant the young guys today uh, uh and 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 get to make wonderful music with them, you know, great music. For a guy who's made a career when I was at school, that they told me you can't do that. It's, it's not a real job. <laughs> uh, 
and and they got all this. They got a house. I have four children. I have nine grandchildren, and they all grew up pretty good, despite having this crazy drummer for a father. <laughs> so I've been I've been blessed with so much. You know. Uh, um, I, I think there's every moment, every time I've been in the studio has been a moment. Uh, every 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 gig I've done is, is it's been a it's been a moment for me. Um, and, and there's been a, a couple of ones that weren't so great, but very few compared to the abundance of of, uh, of uh, music that I've I've been allowed to make. I'm just grateful to all these guys calling me up uh, and uh, and and uh, putting their putting their their trust in 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 what I do with their music, you know? and uh, and so um, I, I can't, you know, I always I, I'm just terrible at names. I think of somebody's name and it's, it's, it's some people some people I know so I just like lose lose the name. Maybe it's my age catching up with me, but I. But I can I can still sit down with that and uh, and uh, and uh, and make him speak and uh, and uh, I'm going to do that until I can't anymore. So um, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for everything, every minute, every moment. It's been uh, it's been it's been wonderful, wonderful. It's, a, it's it's been a wonderful career. What a career! It, uh, beyond beyond what I dreamed about doing, you know, way beyond. Yeah. And so many different, you know, every kind of style too. Um, yeah. Do you it's, prefer doing funk or rock, or do you have a preference? I I just like making good music, and people seem to come in and bring me great songs to play, and I just enjoy play, playing them. It's like, what what a life, eh? I mean, you know, I, I, I let me tell you that story. I'd say that, that story about um, ordinary world. I was over. Uh, I, I, uh, George Harrison uh, uh, asked Eric Clapton's band to go on tour with him, and I went over to London for about three weeks rehearsal before we went went to Japan. And uh, I got there, and uh, and because I did the Albert Hall, I was there every every. I was there for a couple of months every year, and I rent uh, instead of going into a hotel, I'd rent an apartment right on Sloan Street, just down the road from the Albert Hall. I could walk to the Albert Hall if I if I wanted to. Sometimes I'd actually run out and take the bus with the fans up to the up to the Albert Hall to go play with Eric. Yeah. And um, uh, 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 I, I, I rented a car because we were rehearsing out of the town. And uh, I, I, I get there, get in my apartment, get my car. And I think I take a drive down to Kings Road, maybe do a bit of shopping. So I got drive down to Kings Road, and I'm driving along Kings Road in the traffic very slowly. And I see a guy walking down the street, and I look at this guy, and I say, "Well, that, that looks like looks like Warren Cucurullo from Duran Duran." But this guy was buffed; he was like a, like a bodybuilder. And Warren, last time I saw him, was like a skinny little rock and roller. I didn't know that he'd been lifting weights and stuff, you know. So he's like in this wife beater shirt with his muscles popping out, big muscles. And I said, hey, Warren. <laughs> Warren, he said, "Oh, Steve, he said, are you in town?" I said, "Yeah, I'm here." I said, and this is why I'm still driving along, right, very slowly along the King's Road. He said, "He said, I need you to do a session for me." I said, "I'm here with George Harrison. I don't know what my schedule is. Call me. Let me know when you can work." And he takes a cassette out of his bag and he throws the cassette through my car window, and I drive off, and I, I get this. Cassette, pop it in and have a listen and see what this is. Ordinary world, the demo for ordinary world. I get back to my get back to my to my apartment, pick up the phone, call him up and say, Warren, I just listened to that song that you sent me. You don't need me on here. <laughs> this is this is a hit record. If ever I had a hit record, this is a hit record. And he's like, We want you to play it. We want you to play on it. I said, okay. So that day we went and started rehearsals. I got the picture about how 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 George used to work. Worked pretty much like Tom. Start work about two o'clock in the afternoon, seven o'clock, we're done, finished. And so a few days later, uh, they set up a session. I finished work, uh, a rehearsal. I drove 
drove to South London, uh, to this studio in South London, and we cut uh, uh, Ordinary World. And big hit for, for Duran Duran. And now, uh, that was by a happen By fate or happenstance or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was that was that was my that 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 was I don't know like I said that was a hit record when I heard it the demo I don't know if I bought something to it or maybe I just maybe I hands enhanced it a little bit I don't know everybody loves loves the track but uh it's a it, it, it's a blessing I've been I've been really blessed with it, with that all through my life and get invited to do some stuff that I knew that knew that was going to be a hit other stuff I didn't know and uh and um you know even when I when I when I started working with Tom Petty on wildflowers that was that was that was that when we started playing it was just me and me and Mike and Tom and and we start we started off by playing you don't know how it feels and and it sound it didn't sound like I'd heard Tom Petty sound before. It it was it was a different vibe, you know. Who knew? <laughs> I had no idea that it was going to be such a such a such a big hit, such a popular song. Tom knew. Do you feel like you you have a signature element to your style? You know, um, is it just a a feel? Uh, do you think, or is it a particular tendency that you have that you interject? Or, uh, yeah, I think I think that there's there's a, there's a there's a like you said before, a pocket. I think there's a, a pocket. Everybody has one. Uh, I think there's a pocket to what I play that that people can feel that it that it's me playing. Yeah, you know? and um, uh, 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 I, yeah, I think I think there's there's a particular gift I've been given of, of playing a downbeat in the right place where, where I play it. it just makes it feel good. Yeah, you know, nothing nothing that I studied, just something that I was given, that I was born with. You know, gift. You, do you do solo spots uh, when you play with Tom Petty? Drum solos? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I haven't seen a petty show, so I don't know. <laughs> oh no, hell no. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know, I know a drum solo. I'm a I'm a band, I, I'm an ensemble guy. <laughs> I like I like to play songs. Uh um I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not a drum solo guy. There's guys out there that are and they're really amazing. Yeah. But, uh, 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 you know, is it, so I do I do drum clinics. I go and do drum clinics, and uh, and uh, and I'll play a bit of a solo sometimes, but I'm not really that over keen on myself doing that stuff. But um, uh, uh, I think that sometimes a lot of people they go to to drum clinics to learn, they learn how to uh, you know uh, go to see see a, a drummer, see how a professional drummer does it. And some of these guys, they play stuff that's like absolutely impossible. They work, they work so hard to 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 learn how to do that stuff. You know, and just a, a phenomenal drummers. But sometimes you'll see people watching them and they're discouraged. They say, "Oh, I'll never be able to do that. That's too difficult. That's way too difficult." Well, you don't have to do that to play the drums. All you have to do is learn how to play a song. All you have to do is just play. Have a good time. Yeah, and do that well, and that's hard enough. Trust me. Like, oh, you play so simply. Well, if it's so simple, you do it. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a feeling. It's, it's, it's hard. You know, and you were you were in that documentary, "Let There Be Drums," right? I think so. Yeah, yeah I, last year. Yeah, somebody somebody sent me something about that. <laughs> And still uh, people ask me to talk about my drums drums a lot <laughs> well i'm, I'm trying to bring uh, i'm trying i'm trying to bring uh people up to speed with your latest uh uh projects and i know you're doing the uh uh steve Froney and friends still right yeah yeah my buddies from, uh, from france my french band yeah and uh, uh it's a great great band all these guys from strasbourg and they rehearse without me and everything. And they send me tapes of what their rehearsal's like and they make a few adjustments. 
and go over do a little bit of a little bit of a sound check a little bit of rehearsal and and then we play and they're great players great really 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 good players to play with um, they are players. a great great band very impressive as a matter of fact the the uh, frank Bedez, the the bass player uh the last time i was there uh you know we of course being then being french we'd go out and eat a lot you know so we <laughs> We go to all these restaurants, and then we, he had a dinner at his house. And I went over, me and Julia went over to his house, and there was another couple there. So they were friends of his from, uh, they were French, but they live in Berlin. And uh, uh, and uh, we were talking, and it it, it just got mentioned that that uh, uh, you know I, I, I'm I'm a uh, I, I I officiate weddings every once in a while, yeah, and I did my son. I've done about four. I did Bemont, Bemont Tench. I did his wedding uh, from the Heartbreakers. I, I've done maybe about four or five people, and 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 nobody's got divorced yet <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. I'm a gra- gangster uh, pastor. Mm-hmm. Like you get you get you get a divorce, you're going to ruin my perfect perfect score, and then we're going to have words. You get a visit. Stay, stay married oh or else. Yeah. So. <laughs> So uh, a few weeks, a few weeks later, I got a I got a call from these these this couple that were over at Frank's house, and they said, "We we're, we're going to get married next year, and um, we wondered if you'd come and officiate it." And I said, "Where you get married?" And they said, "In Spain." So I said, "Yeah, that'd be nice. I'd do a trip to Spain." To Spain. <laughs> so so everything was set up, and then COVID hit. <laughs> well, the good news is they're getting married. They're getting married this July. And uh, and uh, and they made it through COVID without killing each other. <laughs> like there's a lot of a lot of couples didn't. I made it. Me and Julia made it through. We did okay. We did actually very very well with it. But uh, uh, so uh, uh, I'm gonna we're gonna get to go off to Spain and uh, do my other career, which is now a um, 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 pastor. <laughs> <laughs> the Reverend Steve Ferroni. Wow. I like it. So if you're thinking yeah. of getting married or renewing your vows, I could do that for you too. So. I will keep that in mind for sure. Uh, I'm very reasonable. <laughs> are, but are, there is that condition. You can't get divorced. Yeah. Well, are, are your kids musical? No. Hmm. No. And my uh, one granddaughter that is. Yeah. Uh, she, she, She's uh she, but she's taken up gymnastic dancing now. She's sort of lost interest in playing the piano. So, uh, but she can hear a song once and she's got it. You know. Do you dabble in other instruments? Do you ever pick up a bass or uh, no? No, I got them. I got, I got, I got, I got them. But in case anybody comes over and wants to play, jam, you know, and they go, let's see. You. You know, well, it's over there. <laughs> I I I I've never been able to understand notes. Rhythm, I can, I'm okay with, but notes, uh, I wouldn't even know where to start. Like especially even like tuning and stuff. It's like, it's all co- too confusing for it. it. Doesn't make any sense. I tried to get someone to teach me from the get go, from, from, from like you were teaching like a little kid to start with. And the only thing that I learned was that middle C is somewhere around the lock on a piano. Okay, and even then, for me, it's a multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you can read music, and also, you know, that's part rhythm. of it. Rhythm, I can read, yeah, and I, 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 I do all right with that. But I mean, even even that, I'm not, you know, Peter Erskine. If a fly lands on 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 a on a on a, on a really complicated chart, he'll play it. You know, it, 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 I, I'm not I'm not that good. You know, I, I can I can get to a chart. I can follow a chart and play the stuff that I play. The songs that I play. Are Are you surprised at all that the uh, AWB catalog has held up like it has? You no, know that it... good songs, good songs, a lot of good songs. There's a lot of good songs. I I, I think uh, you know when you when you um, when you look at the uh, 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 a lot of these uh, catalogs that people have. You know, 
they're, they're meaningful. I mean, uh, you know, even like Duran Duran, they, they they got they got a hell of a catalog now. They did they, they and they and they're current. Uh, you know, Tom Petty always remained current. He never just said, "Well, you know, I've got all these hit hit records and hit songs and stuff. I, I'm going to stop recording." He always kept go- he kept going. He wanted to do more stuff. You know, Fleetwood Mac, he keep recording new music. Mike Campbell on his own now is recording another album with the Dirty Knobs. Is a uh, we all keep creating. I I, I got a, a band that I work we call Generation Radio. With Jason Sheff, formerly of uh, of Chicago, and Jay DeMarcus from uh, Rascal Flats, and uh, we're going to go and do some recording. I think in, in March. And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that uh, you know, to make some new music, make stay fresh, stay young. You know? do, you, do you have any? Do, do you have any theory why um, AWB was basically the only, really, to me, the only white group that was authentic in its funk and soul that came down the pike? You know, I mean, because if you look at the blues invasion. There were like a lot of British acts that really did great with the blues. Yeah. But AWB is like the only one that really seemed to do great with the funk. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, there, 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 there were there were some good bands that uh, came out of England. Kokomo was one of them. Uh, Gonzalez, there were, there were another band that was, that, was, that was really, really good. But AWB just had, that, had something that was really... Um, Really special, uh, I, I, and I think it, it's kind of like I—I I, I remember uh, when um, w- when when I had the the the, uh, the um, uh, more headband, uh, we, were, we were playing at Long Beach, and average white band were opening for Tower of Power in a club across the street, and I called them up, and and Oni and and Alan came over. And I invited them up to sit in, and they 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 sat in on on our in, on our instruments, and and we played a couple of AWB songs, and you should have seen the faces of the guys in the band. It was like, oh, that's that's what it's about, you know. It, it, it's like you're in it. When I played with George Harrison at rehearsal one day, Ringo showed up, and Ray Cooper had another drum kit that he used to play on the uh, on the stage in in one of the songs, and. Uh, and um, and I caught Ringo's eye sitting out in the sitting out in the just standing out there in the, the rehearsal place, and I said, "Get over there, you know." And uh, Ringo came up and uh, and 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 just sat there, started playing the drums with George, you know, and sort of fell back into an accompanying place, and it's like, ah, so that's what it felt like to play in the Beatles, you know. Uh, there's a feel there's a feel that happens to it you know? chemistry is very so real when you have that when you have those guys that make that kind of music uh, uh, heartbreakers or, or, or beatles and, you know, and average white band the the the, the catalog that get the, the amount of music that comes out of there is always has something that's, that's special yeah is there anyone left that's sort of someone you'd like to collaborate with that hasn't happened that's still with us well, I've said it a few times, you know. I, 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 this, I think, uh, you know, Flea, uh, I, I've listened to him play a few times, and, and he has that sort of quirky thing about playing. Too, the, 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 uh, 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 Chili Peppers have got that sort of special sort of quirkiness to them when they play, you know. And, and uh, I'd like to play with Flea. I'd really like to play with him for a second on something. Uh, I, I, I think that that would be he'd be a fun person to make music with. That'd be great. I could see him even maybe doing a more up tempo AWB cover, maybe like a Cut the Cake or something. Maybe. You know, well, I'd like to sit down and do some AWB originals more than doing some covers. <laughs> so, uh, we mind getting to do some fresh stuff rather than. Then play the old ones again. Uh, 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 at a certain point, well, that's, what, tri- that, that's what tri- was exciting tri- exciting to me about the 360 band project because it was sort of almost like new EWB. Yeah, yeah, it, it it'll uh, uh, you know it'll happen. I mean, I I got a call the other day about a, a festival in in Edinburgh 
this year. Uh, um, and uh, uh, Hamish, he said that the guy said that he's spoken to Hamish. I've just got to call Hamish and verify that that's right. But um, uh, I'm looking forward to if that happens. That would be a fun thing to do. And uh, uh, and uh, and 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 Julia, uh, my Julia, my, my fiance, she she's 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 totally enamoured with all these travel log uh, uh, TV shows that she sees on Scotland. And it's always sunny and it's so beautiful. And then I said, well, yeah, but most of the time it's raining there. <laughs> That's how it gets to look. So we're going to go, if we're going to go, we're going to go in the summer. And it just so happens that uh, this is when I got to do that, uh, that wedding and that it's a week before that. So uh, and then, you know what, if we're going to do that thing in Edinburgh, we're going to do a trip around Scotland. I promised them one a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, we do that trip. Then it'd be, it should be just about right to do that. It'd be perfect. Well, look, I, I By the way, got, I got to you... tell you, see that you see that drum there? Which one? That drum there, the one under the, uh, I'm pointing at. That one the there. black one. With the black stripe. That's average yeah. white band drum. Kit. Oh, that's the snare drum. That's the snare drum from the average white band drum kit. Wow, right there. That's uh, person to person. That was on person to person. That was on uh, Phil No Fret. That one right there. I got the whole kit in my storage. I had it refurbished, the whole thing refurbished. It's beautiful. Nice. Phil No Fred's probably the last record that had the still the original AWB sound before things started kind of changing. Yeah. 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 We did that. We produced that. Yeah, you guys were on the island or something, right? Yeah, yeah. We went to to Nassau. Yeah. And did it. Yeah. Well, I know you got a role. Um, is there anything else you'd like to plug or promote uh to, to the viewers and listeners before uh yeah. Yeah, I don't self-promote. You'll find out if I do something. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been really nice talking to you. You too, Steve. Thank you so much. Uh, continued good health, and I uh, can't wait to hear some new stuff, as always. Yeah, well, won't be long. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Okay, bye, -bye. bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Truth and Rhythm. A big thank you goes out to our guest as well as to you, the viewer and listener. Also, much gratitude to Pleasure for supplying the show's funky opening and closing music. As a reminder, you can always access the complete list of linked shows by episode at funkinstuff.net. I urge you to support this program and receive the extra benefits along with that by subscribing to the Funk and Stuff channel on YouTube and sharing it with funk, R&B, and jazz lovers, joining Truth and Rhythm's membership program at Patreon, submitting a donation at funkandstuff.net, buying Everything is on the One, the first guide to funk book at Amazon, shopping at the Funky Things store for cool merchandise at funkandstuff.net, and linking through funkandstuff.net for all of your Amazon purchases. In addition, if you're an artist or anyone seeking proven, results-oriented, professional marketing, PR, writing, or editing consultation or production, check out the media services section at funkinstuff.net. Also, I encourage you to drop me a line at scottg at funkinstuff.net. I love the feedback, suggestions, guest requests, appearance and sponsorship inquiries, and just talking about my favorite subject, groove-based music. For now, and as always, this is Scott Dr. GX Goldfine saying, keep on keep vibing on to the rhythm of the one. we